This session will be about livestock production systems in order to provide you with some basics about what are we talking about, why are they so important and how do they function and therefore what is the relevance for, uh, for, for your research and for our project. When we look at the different regions of the world, especially in pastoral areas, there are a number of different animals that are typical and characteristic to the different regions. We talk about very often large ruminants that are quite typical of certain areas, such as yak for the Tibetan plateau and camels for the, 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 the African drylands and some other animals. The large ruminants are very often associated to the local typical uh, identity and culture of, of pastoral populations. And then we have the, the small ruminants, the sheep and the goats, that we can easily find all over the globe and in whatever region. So we already have a kind of classification with, between large ruminants and small ruminants that have and comply with different roles and kind of responsibilities in the pastoral economy. Uh, we are here talking about the domesticated species. The, these are the, the ruminants that through history have been domesticated by people in order to make some use of them and vice versa. And for each one of them, there are different breeds, as you might know, ge genetical breeds that have and uh, show different capacities and different characteristics. Uh, why are uh, livestock so important then? Livestock are important ruminants, especially because they, they are a kind of vital technology that enable transforming uh, plants, vegetational resources into food for people. Not only food, but even other products, fibers, hides, skin, dung. But basically is the idea of transforming plants into proteins. That is the key, key device, I would say, that make ruminants so relevant in order for, for pastoralists and for people to live in certain specific areas out of uh, the, the rangeland resources. Some other products are, as we said, uh, fibers, head skin and dung that have also some economic importance. But uh, what is relevant in food is that it's not only produced, but it's also transferred from one place to another through animals and from one season to another. Mm -hmm. To give you one very simple example, camels, they can uh, keep on producing milk even during the lengthy dry periods because of the water they can store when they go for drinking once every two or three weeks. So it's not just producing food uh, uh, on the spot daily, but it's transferring and transforming this food through seasons and through places. Another third important element that I want to highlight is that <coughs> livestock also provide a number of services, so social <coughs> and ecological or ecosystem services, as they are called nowadays, that go from uh, basic services for the household, such as transportation or uh, support for uh, draft power for plowing the land, up to the dung in the Tibetan plateau where there are little <coughs> trees, dung is the key element to have some fire in the, in the house and therefore keep the household warm. And some other uh, uh, services and assets, financial ones, such as a collateral for any kind of uh, rental <coughs> or, or insurance, saving investment and uh, other kind of uh, financial assets and uh, socio-political aspects as well, such as the identity. As I said, uh, some pastoral populations identify themselves with specific animals, such as the Somali with camels, Tibetans to an extent with yak and so on and so forth. And these animals very often, it's interesting because there's the same definition that uh, put together the yak and the camel in the same family, that is the vessel. The yak are the vessels of the plateau and the camels are the, the vessels of the desert. Meaning that in one term you have uh, providing life and movement to the population living there. What is the tricky device, the key of this ruminant system? Is a a stomach architecture, a stomach system that is made up of four different uh, plots. And uh, the rumen, the, the omasum, the reticulum and the abomasum. And these four different stomachs, different from what we have, enable uh, digesting plant resources, cellulose and lignin and some others. It's a system where uh, food is, feed is moving from one stomach to another and even coming back to the mouth for kind of rechewing, so there's a movement, mobility is everywhere, a movement of a feed within the system that makes that digestible and digested by the end of the story. This is important and, and interesting because this also explains why very often animals, after they've been grazing or browsing or drinking, they prefer sit and stay quiet or lie down and stay quiet for a while, 
because there's all this functioning of this uh, system, complex system that is taking place. So they need some rest just after feeding. And as you can imagine, different animals have different habits and capacities, demand and require different ecology, feeding, watering, skills, knowledge and time and provide for different products and services. This is what we'll be discussing in the coming minutes. Let's go through then some kind of basic classification. When we talk about, uh, about ruminants, two major classes to be defined are the, the grazers, the animals that feed on, uh, on annual plants, such as grasses, herbal resources, and these are basically sheep, cattle, but also yak and buffaloes. And then we have the, the, the browsers that are uh, more uh, specifically feeding on uh, more woody resources such as shrubs. And these are typically goats and camels. So there's a difference between browsers and grazers to start with. But in order to have a more comprehensive picture about the differences and diversities of the, the animals that we are dealing about we are dealing with in our pastures areas. I provide this kind of table where we have two major axes. One is about small and large ruminants and the other one is about grazers and browsers. And as we've seen, small and large ruminants, they play different roles in the local pastoral economy because of uh, um, their, their role into the local feeding system and to the local economy as well as the socio-political system, but also because of some of specific of the specific features that characterize them we'll see them in a while but just to give you a simple example sheep and goat they they are smaller basically they reproduce much faster and therefore they play a key role after a crisis or a shock such as in the in the post drought period it's much easier and faster to recover a flock of sheep and goats because it takes much much shorter than to recover a herd of uh, cattle or camels so being smaller and being more manageable in a way and having a faster reproduction rate makes small ruminants more convenient for certain specific purposes. Whereas large ruminants, camel, yak, buffalo and cattle, they play a different role in the local economy. When you go to the market, they are much more valued, but it's much more complicated to sell them because the value is much higher. And as I said, they play as well a socio-political uh, identitarian value within the, the pastoral system very often. Notwithstanding that the different large ruminants, they have different properties, such as calm, as we said, they can perform very well in very heat and very dry conditions, but they face problems when the humidity, the rate of humidity is high. Yak, on the opposite, they perform very well in very high altitude and cold environments, but they suffer when the, the environment becomes hot, such as I, I think it's 14 degrees the rate, the threshold above which they start suffering and they, they have some, some physiological and health problems. And then buffalo, they, they perform very well in uh, wet environments, but they have problems with parasites. And then you have cattle, depending on the breed, they have performed better in dry environments or wet environments. So just a composition about which are the, the, main, the main features of each one of them. And as I said, for large ruminants, they are often associated to the pastoral group and very often they are taking care about men. Whereas for sheep and goats, it's very often the case that it is children or women that take care of the, the small ruminants. Uh, to give you a simple example, when I was working in northern Somalia, camels were not belonging to the household, were belonging to the clan and were somehow redistributed and managed by the households. But it was every time a camel was to be sold, the, the question was posed to the higher clan levels. That was not the case for, for the small ruminants that were property of the household and therefore the management was much simpler and easier. So, I provide you here some basic figures. I won't go into the details, I just highlighted some of these in order to show you how the fertility, the fertility rate of sheep and goats are shorter than the others. Meat production is better in cattle and buffaloes in terms of quantity at least. Whereas for camels, what I highlighted is the capacity to go during dry periods without drinking for about two or three weeks. So whereas sheep and goats, they have to drink every two, three days. So you can imagine that you can, you can 
figure out how pastoral households have to manage a pool, a set of resources, labor in the household, forage in the rangeland, water access, every single day in order to perform, in order for the herd and the flock to perform properly according to the specific needs and targets of the, the household. Um, one key point that I want to highlight, because very often in the literature you will find that there's an interest, there's a concern in scientific as well as uh, development literature about meat from pastoral areas for market purposes. Very often this, is the case. this has been the, the case, the, the perspective through which pastoral systems have been looked at. But basically the pastoral systems are hinging on a milk-based economy. So the, the heart of a pastoral system is to produce milk on a consistent and uh, continuous basis. That is, I would say, the basics of, of the pastoral economy. So even though other products are very often quoted and uh, looked into, services, fibers, dung, uh, meat and whatever, milk has to be kept in the center of your attention when looking at pastoral systems. And therefore, when we look at milk, you can imagine that different animals provide different milk. We've seen the quantities, cattle and buffalo, they produce higher quantities compared to others, but the quality of the milk is also relevant. Every single animal provides a unique, let's say, composition of milk. The basics are the water, the protein, the fat, the lactose, that, that is the sugar and the ash content. And the, according to the quality of the proteins, of the sugar and the quantity, the composition of this milk and the property of this milk change quite consistently. To give you some simple example, milk from ewes or sheep is very often not used as such as a fresh milk, but is very good when processed into cheese, as the, the pecorino case, as we know. Uh, in the case for camel, it's just the opposite. It's very difficult because of the nature of, of, of this milk, basically the protein and the sugar content, to, to process it into cheese and butter. So it's very often used and consumed as fresh milk. So you have same word milk for two very different products. And so on for other products and I mean for other milk products of the different animals. This is one of the reasons amongst the others that we'll be mentioning why very often when you look at herds and flocks in pastoral areas you will find that there's a, a mix. The composition of, and the structure of these uh, herds and flocks is a mix of different animals not only within the same species, but you might very often face that you find uh, large and small ruminants in the same herd, or browsers and grousers, or animals devoted to meat production and to meat production for different purposes. So the pastoral herd and flock is a mixed composition of different animals that somehow express the different capacities and the different needs of the pastoral households and the, pastoral and the local pastoral economy. Very often, the, the way the composition, I mean, if you look into the composition of the herd of the flock, you will understand a lot about what is the local uh, economic, basic economic strategy. There are uh, a number of rates that I highlighted here, <coughs> fertility rates, mortality rates, calving rates, that you might be able to understand for each one by asking through the, to the, the, the owners, understand about what is the dynamic and the strategy of the, the, the herd. And this will help you somehow understanding how the herd is managed and why, which are the, 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 the reasons for managing animals in such a, a, a way. You will see that very often what is taken into account is ecological, economic, as well as uh, socio-political implications. The animal, animals coming from the clan, uh, the grazing areas, access to the water, how many children do I have in my family. Uh, so it's a set of information that you can somehow understand by looking into the structure and the composition of the, the herd and the flock. Very often these animals are put together in a very clever way in order to provide for some kind of complementarity in utilizing the resource of the, the rangeland or of the household, as well as a source of minimizing risk when it comes to animal health. For example, some animals are affected by some diseases that not necessarily affect the other animals, so you will save at least part of the herd. And then to provide for socioeconomic diversification, you might have different products to bring to the market. You might have goats plus camel milk. So you have two products and you can play properly into, into the marketing system. So just to say that if 
that might be one of the the things you want to be interested in looking into the structure and the functioning of a of a head gives you a lot of information that might be relevant might be relevant for understanding the local pastoral economy to end up with very simple example uh, about what we'll be mentioning is that this is a, a seasonal calendar from the Shanghai Plateau 2004. You will see that it's basically sheep and yak, and the lambing and milking periods of these two animals are spread differently throughout the year. So this provides you to have milk for a much longer period than just having one species of animal. And provide you and give you the opportunity of using feeding resources and labor resources differently throughout the year so by mixing different animals with different properties and capacities you are able somehow to uh, play with some flexibility and uh, enrich and diversify your system so this is one of the the elements that has to be kept in mind when looking into into pastoral systems <coughs> i thank you very much for your attention these are some credits for the pictures and this is a uh, one camel uh, smiling and uh, <laughs> cheering. <yeah. laughs>